Hello everybody and welcome back to the Rough Mix channel. This is your boy Estuan slash Trunks, uh, whatever you want to call me. Um, but, so today's episode is actually going to be a tutorial. It's not a Rough Mix podcast episode. Um, this is actually a tutorial today, like we've been saying, like we've been promised. Like I've been signing myself up for the last 25 probably YouTube videos that I've been saying we're going to do. But now it's actually time to do it. Um... So the first thing I'm going to tell you, the first video that's going to be posted on this channel that's a tutorial is actually how to set up a recording slash tracking template for yourself. So let me get straight into it and actually not waste any time because I have now done this three times. And give me some a like and a, and a subscribe if you haven't, if you know you want to support my dedication. Uh, so you want to hit Pro Tools when, you hit, and you, when, it hits, when it's open, uh, you want to hit Command N and it opens up a new session. And as you see, I've, I just did this, so I'm going to call it. Uh, I like to call my I like to name my sessions by an artist so I'll put myself trunks and then I'll do the name of the song I'll call it uh, fire and then I'll call it I'll do I'll usually put uh, what I'm doing for that session so tracking recording or tracking recording is the same thing mastering or mixing so I'm putting tracking uh, like this tracking and I put underscores under them because they don't allow any special characters like a dash or a slash or um, yeah so dash or slash they won't let you so I put underscores just so it separates it and looks a little neater. And then we're not actually we're not gonna hit that, so don't, don't we'll actually show you about that later. Um, so you wanna hit local storage, and then you wanna hit interleaved, 24, uh, 48, and then you wanna hit a wave, and then the, the I/O settings you wanna do last or um, stereo mix, sorry, and then you want it to prompt for your location. And you wanna hit create, and now it's gonna ask you because you said prompt for location. You're gonna put you're gonna it's gonna ask you where do you wanna save it to. So for me personally, I'm going to put it in my desktop under my Pro Tools folder, which is here. So then I'm going to put save. And now it's going to open up, bring up the session here. Ah, you guys can't see me anymore. Okay, there you go. Let me just make it float because I did not select it. I thought it was already on there. So there we go. Now it's going to float on here and never go away. Um, so now we're in Pro Tools here. And now what we want to do is actually make some tracks to record, right? So we want to put Command Shift N. And me personally, I do around eight to ten tracks usually um, and I'll show you guys uh, how to make them so you could either use arrow keys let me repeat that again I did it too fast command shift and the, the letter N N as in Nancy command shift N and then you make a new track um, if you can't remember that there's a track up here and then you put new and it's the same way to open it just, just I like to show people the hotkeys because I think it's really important to know them it's gonna improve your workflow and you'll be a whole lot faster and artists are going to want to work with you a lot more. So, once you have a track here, you want to put the up arrow, up or down, however many tracks you want. Or you could type it in. You know, there's two ways of doing it. So, for me, I like to have, um, I'll put 10 mono audio tracks. When you're recording, you always want to have it in mono. Uh, when you're recording vocals, you want to have it in mono. So, then you want to put command shift down to now make a new set of tracks. So, for this set, I want to make a, mo a stereo master fader. And now you only want one master fader. So you're going to put command left to hit stereo, command down twice to hit master fader. And that's all you need to know. Then you want to put enter. And there you are. Um, there it is. Now all these selected, all these that came up are now uh, selected. So you want to put option, click it, or click, you know, click one of them that were selected so that they're not all highlighted. And then you want to click, dang, my scrolling down for no reason, uh, double click. Where it says audio, you want to put tracking like that. You want to double click. Sorry about that. Hold on. Had a little t difficulty there. All right. So another a trick I'm going to show you guys to just keep going down instead of you having to click OK and then click another one and then OK, click another one. It's way simpler, way more, way simpler, way faster, something like that. Command shift down. There you are. Now it brings you to the next track below that. So now you can start naming the next tracks below. And I'm going to call it hook underscore one. Command shift down. Hook underscore two. I'll show you guys why I do two. Then I put LV for lead vocal or lead vox, whatever. Underscore lead vox underscore one. Command shift down. You get it, right? So we're just going to be doing that for all the tracks. And then after my lead vocal, after my hook and my lead vocal, I like to make another one for like my dubs or overdub. So like that, dub. What a dub is, is basically just um, a layer of the whole thing. Just as one, like, I like to try to do, have them do it in, in one whole take if they can. If not, break it into parts just so I can have um, a layer of the actual recording, right? 
just so it adds like a little bit more um, grittiness. There's a lot of reasons why people like to layer it, but um, I'll have an overdub one, and then I'll call I'll have an ad lib one because you know rappers like to do their ad libs. Then I'll put sweeteners. What su- sweeteners are is uh, when you rec- when you rhyme over the last word you, oh, when you record over the word that's last rhymed. If that makes any sense at all, the last bar, like say the last bar is like, um, one two three. Uh, sitting under a tree, and then the rapper would be like sitting under a tree, you know, like they'd say they'd enunciate it even more to bring more presence out. That was a really bad example. That's why I don't rap. So command shift down again, go to the next thing, and I like to make an experimental track. So I just call it EXP, and that's it. And then for the audio tent or the tenth track for the mono. Audio track, I like to just leave it blank just because I might have another experimental track, quote unquote, or like a track that I might need on extra. Just have it on hand. So now we've named all of them. And then for the master, honestly, you don't have to rename it. You can maybe get rid of the one if that really bothers you. So just call it master. It's up to you. Um, so now we're going to go to tr- to how to color them. So how to color them is where the actual track on the left side, if you hover above it long enough, it should say that track color mode. Double click that. For my recording track, I like to always put uh, red, just because when you record, it's the red button. So now you can have it color coded. And now for my hook, I like to I like to put select both of them at once. I don't have to keep one, so that way I don't have to keep selecting both. I just realized I was talking really fast. Um, I drank coffee and I'm all jittery. So if you're, you know, getting getting lost, I'm like, oh, he's going too fast. Um, slow down the video, like either on the times playback engine, playback speed, or just you know rewatch it a little bit. Um, you know what? I'm going to try to calm myself down. So I want to select one and then push shift, click on the one below it so I could select both. And now I could color both tracks at once. And for my hook, I like to have a bright color. So I'll do like a bright green like that. Um, you don't have to follow the same colors. You could do whatever color you want. This is just the way I do it. So then now for the hook, I did that. And I'm going to do the lead vocal the same way. My personal one is blue. And then for these experimental ones and dubs and ad libs I like to make them all the same color and I'll make them all like a dark purple like that and then that's just the way I do it like that you could change the master fader if you want I know a lot of people are against that like Vic and Eli um, I don't really care about it so I'll make it like a like an even darker blue purplish kind of thing like that and then now we're pretty much ready to start recording it's all simple what I like to do is also add in a reverb track for the a reverb for the tracking one because a lot of people like to hear reverb with them when they record. So you want to put tracking verb. That's what I call it. Because you might want to use a different reverb for something else, you know. So this is just for the strictly uh, tracking. So you could press. And the fader's going to automatically be down unless you change it in the settings. The settings. But to bring it back up to Unity, you want to press option, click, and it goes straight to zero. That's exactly zero right there. So now if you hear me, it's going to be doubled. Hello. So then we can mute it, and that's only one. And you can unmute it, and now it's two of me, right? It's layered because it's a send. Of the, it's, what a send is is the exact same copy, just sending it to a different track to manipulate it. And you can blend in the original signal back in like that, or, or the affected z- signal, sorry. So for the tracking reverb, I'll just use a stock D verb since everybody has that. And then you want to push the gain all the way up to zero. And now we, should bl- now we can blend in the affected signal, which is the reverb, and I should slowly be getting and hearing that reverb you hear. Hello. Hello. Yes. You hear that? So that's how you put in the reverb. So what I'm going to do is take that. So you can't hear myself anymore. And then I press command click. So now it's going to be um, disabled, right? And for all my sends and delays and, t- and effects and processing and all that, I like to bring it all the way down to the bottom, right above the, the master, just like that. That's just me personally. I know you're gonna say like, wait, if I could just go, it's right, right, right below. It's faster. For me, I understand being fast, but at the same time, I like to, it to be clean. So I bring it down here. Um, and this is also, if you like the sound of it, you could just manipulate the sound or how much you're affecting by the the knob, the fader here. So there you are. Say you want a little bit of reverb like that when you're recording, and it helps them out a lot more, right? So that's what I pretty much do for my tracking template. I'll just disable it for now. And you don't always have to have reverb. A lot of people might not want to record. If so, okay, if someone says, this is a good, this is a good way, right? If someone is saying, like a rapper or artist, you 
record off maybe not often or like you're starting to record or whatever and they say they don't want to hear, hear themselves all you have to do when you're recording is press m to mute and it's going to record it'll record uh but without them hearing themselves that's literally the, uh, the easiest way to do it right there so now they, if they want to hear themselves have it unmuted if they don't push mute simple as that so that's pretty much it and then i'll show you guys how to import a beat actually so command shift i is to import a beat import audio sorry not just for a beat but we'll just throw in that one uh, sure and then you want to hit uh click on the one you want and then want to convert it if it's not already the uh, 48 48 uh kilohertz um sample rate you want to push done and then you want to press enter again because you want it to save under your auto audio files for your session folder now it's going to process the audio and then load it in and, and it's going to ask you if you want to create a new track and yes you want to create a new track so you want to press enter again and there you are so now what you want to do is grab it and then put it to the very top because that's where i like my beat at and if you have stems it's the same exact way you want to just click one press shift and then click all the stems so they're all highlighted and you want to press convert and then you have them all loaded in um, for me personally, I like to change the color of it as well. So I'll click anywhere in it, right? That and you want to press Command A. And if you don't see, if you see for me how the top is like a like a, a cursor, kind of like a, a cursor, and then the bottom is like the hand. If you're wondering why mine switches, it's because I have these settings up here changed. So there's it tells you if you hover above it long enough, the trim tool, and then there is the selector tool, and there's the grabber tool. There's three tools, correct? Well, there's more, there's tons of tools, but uh, there's Pro Tools. That's why it's called Pro Tools. But th for this one specifically, that you're always going to be using the most, if you click right above it, you'll select all three at the same time. So now you have all three selected at the same time, and now it just depends above or below that middle line if you see it crossing. So that's just a tip. Um, click on the top, then you want to press Command A so it's selecting that whole track. Then double click the color again, and then put uh, whatever color you want, say you want the beat to be yellow, but the, see how the track didn't change? You want to select where it says tracks and go to clips and tracks. Now you press yellow, and there you are, now it's yellow. And that's how we do a simple tracking template. So you want to press Command Save, or Command S to save, or Control S, whatever you're, you're on, Mac or Windows. And now, uh, to save this as a template, we want to press File, Save as Template, and then Record and Mix. And then we're going to call it Trunks, or you can call it whatever you want, but for me, I'm just going to call it Trunks Recording Template, just for now, just uh, as a reference, right? And then you want it to install in system, yes, and the, the category is recording and mixing. And then all we do is press OK. Oh, you could also include media. So what include media is trying to say is that it, it's actually, um, uh, sorry if you hear my dog barking, but... Um, Include media will say like if you have a if you have a beat like this if you put include media it'll save this template with the beat in there. So most of the time I don't do that because it's a new session. So I press OK. So loading that up. Now oh not loading it up it's saved. So now I'm gonna press Command Shift W, and what that does is it closes the session right. Pro Tools is still open so that way you don't have to reload it. And then what you gotta do now is on Pro Tools. In there, sorry about my dog still barking. Um, she's very uh, defensive of the house. Um, I'm pretty sure it's my dad too, so I don't know why that's going on. But Pro Tools, I like to keep it real here. No cuts, no edits. I don't do none of that. Um, I'm I'm a very real person. So that's I don't know why I'm trying to get you to talk about myself. All right, so now we're gonna do it again. Command N. So now we're gonna say, oh, I got another session with some other artist. Put their artist name here, you know. Uh, put uh, I'm gonna put say we'll put Vic. Say Vic's um, recording or something. Vic, and then his song is like uh, uh, Yee, because he's from the Bay. I'll just call it that. Whatever Yee, Vic Yee. So I have the artist name and then the song and then what I'm doing, which is I'm tracking. So if I push Create from Template, you will now see the recording template we just saved. And there you go. And all the settings are going to be the same because you just open it. And then you want to hit create. And it's going to tell you where you want to what you want to save it to. So I'm going to save it on my desktop, on my Pro Tools folder. And there we have it. We are now ready to record. That track, uh, I forgot to, to delete it. 
So now, there we are. We're literally ready to import a beat in there and start recording right away. And if you want reverb, you just press command, click, and now reverb is enabled. If you want to add more reverb, go down to your, or sorry, if you want more reverb, go to your send and then just blend it up a little more if you want more up to the artist. And there you are. And you, this is pretty much how I set up my own tracking template, how uh, you can set up your own tracking template, put any plugins you want. It'll all save as long as you're putting everything you save as a template and everything, every time you load it up, saves you so much more time. It saves you whatever, however long it took me to set it up, like 10 minutes, that's what it's gonna save you. And 10 minutes is a lot, time is money in this industry. And that time will, if you're fast, you'll, I guarantee you get so many more clients, more people gonna wanna work with you. It's just all in all a, a way better way to do it. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for how to set a recording template in Pro Tools. If you guys li uh, like this video, make sure to hit like, make sure to subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss any, you don't miss anything on this channel. We also do podcasts. If you're into podcasts for audio engineering or music producing, we do that as well. If you want to uh, actually watch my YouTube videos, I make beats on YouTube. I don't make beats on YouTube, sorry. I have like my tight beats up there. If you want to like, you know, listen to them, just follow me and subscribe to me and support me. I'd appreciate it as well. Um, but this has pretty much been it for the Rough Mix channel. Uh, it's been, again, um, Trunks. And this has been how to record and how to, how to set up a recording template in Pro Tools. And this is it for me. And I'm out. Deuces.